Hey everybody, I'm Gary McLean and you are watching Talent Talk. Just a quick reminder for folks that maybe haven't done so already, uh, please do go to the Talent Talk YouTube channel and subscribe today. As always, your support's appreciated. And another reminder that as you can tell from the, the little note down below here, this is a live and interactive show. So if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, just wanna say hi, throw it into the comment section and uh, we'll try to address it as the show goes on. Now, today's guest, she is a two-time Leo Award nominee and a four-time award winner for Best Actress for her role in the feature film Menorca, including one at the UBCP Actor Awards in Vancouver. She starred in multiple projects, including Siren, sorry, Siren and Van Helsing, just to name a couple, but this lady has not stopped at acting. She not only stars, but is executive producer of the romantic comedy Riverfront Romance, now airing on Super Channel till October 18th. So please join me in welcoming actor, producer, Tammy Gillis. Hi! Hello. <laughs> How are Thanks you? Thanks so much for having me. I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm doing well. Yes, it's, uh, it's, not, it's kind of a crisp night here in Calgary right now, but it's okay. It's mid-October, so... <laughs> no snow yet, so right? that's a good well, thing. We had like a snowfall on Saturday oh, no and then way. it just went away the same day. So, hmm. um, but it was coming down pretty heavy, like huge flakes. Oof. I love it's that. Kind of... I'm, I'm originally from Manitoba, so I love the snow. I don't mind it at all when it snows. <laughs> and, but you guys get cold there too, though. In Manitoba. Like, oh, yes. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I personally wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> I'm okay with <laughs> snow, but cold weather, no. It's something else when you go outside and you're like your breath, you kind of catches in your throat because it's just so cold. You're just like, oh, yeah, you can't I quite get that, that full breath. Yes, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, familiar with that as well. Um, so try, speaking of, sorry, I, was go just, ahead. I was just gonna say, try filming out there in the snow. That is in the cold. That is something else. It's like one take, then you go into a warming tent because your mouth stops working. <laughs> right yeah i can it's imagine hilarious. that for sure yeah and i mean speaking of of manitoba um what i kind of like to do is just have the guests do kind of a quick introduction of themselves where are you from how did you get started you know kind of get all that stuff out of the way up front and then we can talk business or shop okay yeah great uh i am tammy gillis i'm originally from mccreary manitoba which is a small town in manitoba and when i lived there there was about 800 people that lived there. There's about 450 now. So it is quite a small town. And uh, I started out as an actor kind of by accident. Um, I was in high school and a new teacher moved to our town. And she was the uh, English teacher and she created a drama program. So it was uh, pretty cool because I'd never really even thought about acting or realized that it was something that I could do. There was not really that opportunity anywhere around us. And so I joined the drama club. I was grandpa in the first ever play that we did because there were no guys in the join the club. And um, I went to university uh, for something completely different. I went to university to become a lawyer of all things. And I realized that lawyers in real life were not like lawyers on television. And it kind of wasn't for me. So I got, uh, I was out with some friends and a modeling agent came and uh, talked to me and was like, would you be interested in modeling? And my friends were like, what is going on? And I'm like, I don't know, it's worth a try. I need uh, the extra money would be great. Um, so I went and took a meeting with them and they signed me and uh, I didn't really enjoy the modeling as much as I enjoyed going out and auditioning for commercials and doing that kind of stuff. And so I started booking some commercials. So I started auditioning for short films because they have a really great independent film community in Winnipeg. And uh, the rest is history. So when did you actually make the transition from Manitoba to here? That was about... Oh, I guess Vancouver. Uh, it was about 20 years ago, I'd say. So I was oh, in wow. university for four years. And then I, well, I came out here for a while. And like, I've kind of lived a bunch of different places. I lived in Toronto for a little while. I lived in LA for a little while. Um, 
but on and off and primarily based out of Vancouver. And as you were saying, you're, you've been in a few different locations and you've acted in all these communities as well, right? The Vancouver, LA, mm -hmm. Toronto. Um, what are some of the differences you've found, like, for example, between LA and Vancouver in, in terms of, um, you know, the approach that actors have to take or anything like that? Or, or well, is there no difference at all? No, there definitely is a little bit more of a difference. Um, I feel like people in LA especially are a little more laid back and they're a little bit more casual at times. Um, and especially in terms of auditioning, I have so many friends that are American that like they go in the room and they hold their sides and they kind of read off the sides. And if they're a hundred, not a hundred percent off book, it's not really a big deal for them versus in Canada. I feel like, and especially in Vancouver and well, I guess in Canada, like if you're not completely hundred percent off book, it's not as great. Um, and like, I have n never really ever gone in the room and audition and never been like a hundred percent off book. Or I mean, I always am like a hundred percent off book, know it upside down, inside out, backwards and forwards. So it's just, I'm, and a lot of the time, well, at least before a lot of my American friends, they wouldn't really dress to really suggest the character. They just kind of go in like themselves and then they, you know, talk, kind of talk it out. I'm like, that's crazy. You could never do that. Especially, well, in Vancouver or Toronto, it's like they expect, I feel like a little bit more of like a final performance here. Right. Well, I'm kind of curious as well. Like, uh, I mean, nowadays with everything almost almost everything being self tape. Um, I, I've been hearing more and more stories of actors that are, you know, they're, they're outside doing their, their scenes and like creating this entire set more or less and, and putting the environment around them. Um, I don't know if that's something you've, you've done or tried or heard about or. Well, I, I, I like, I used to tape actually a lot, even before all of this happened, because I'm very fortunate that I've been able to work all across Canada. So casting and producers all across Canada know me. So it wasn't really that unusual for me to be taping, doing a couple tapings a week. Of course, now it's like everything is a self tape, which is kind of crazy because it's so much work. Um, and I actually just posted something on my Instagram a couple of days ago with clips. A friend of mine challenged me. She's like, I want to see what you've been doing with your self tape. So I took like a bunch of different self tapes and I kind of tried to cut it together, but like, it's a lot of work. And I, I did two self tapes today before this and it was today, Wednesday. I'm like so confused. It I think. Yes. yes, it is Wednesday, but on Monday, and it's a long weekend, it's a holiday, I did two self-tapes and two voiceover auditions. So it is a little bit of a different world. I feel like we don't really even get a weekend anymore mm -hmm. because it, fortunately one thing is great. We end up getting a minimum of one day, generally two versus before when we'd audition, it'd be like next day you're in the room, boom. So we get a little bit more time to do that. And like kudos to all those people that are going and like setting the scene and going outside and doing that. And I'm just like, I just don't have time. I don't have the time to do it. Uh, and like even today, the two characters that I read for, they're very different characters. So for me, I have to, I do like my hair and makeup a little bit differently. I definitely dress a little differently and I need like a moment to get into that mindset to like kind of shrug off that one to move into that. And it's like, that's amazing. And I hope, people are booking with stuff like that. And I hope that's not why they're only booking. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I just don't have the time to like put all of that effort in. It's just the tapes, I'm rolling them out. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm, I'm kind of the same way where I'll try to dress the part as much as I can when I'm auditioning. But um, I, like I said, I see some of these other ones or I've heard about some of these other ones. I'm just like, like you said, A, how do you have the time and B, do the casting directors even really care? Uh, is my other question. Like, all they care is, can you do what you're asked to do? <laughs> really? Well, it's it's interesting because I've watched a couple of the webinars that people have been putting out, and especially like casting workbook, because it was I really want to see what is that 
transition and adjustment to the self tape versus what it maybe was like before. So I've had the opportunity to see casting from all across Canada kind of talk about it and they certainly don't expect it. And sometimes I think maybe it is a little bit too much. Um, it's hard to say, like, I kind of feel like it's hit and miss. Like you've really got to be in the mindset of that director and producer and their production or the second they see it, they might be like, oh, well, that's not what our show's like at all. I don't know. So to me, it's like, it's definitely a little bit of a risk, but it could a hundred percent pay off. I actually remember um, Barry Pepper, if you know who Barry Pepper is, he's a well-known Canadian actor. He wanted to audition, I think for Saving Private Ryan. And they felt, no, you're not appropriate for this. And he's like, come on, just give me an opportunity. I'll self-tape it. So he lived, he has a house in Vic Vancouver, Vancouver Island. And so he got his wife to film him. And he was like out in the woods. Was it? It was not, it wasn't Saving Private Ryan. It was a different show, but they were like, you, we just don't see you in that genre. So he did it and he ended up winning the part because of that. Cause he's like, I can prove you wrong. I really want to be a part of this movie. So I'm like, I love that. Um, so it's, a, I don't know, you know, like I know there are people that have really gov gone above and beyond and done it and it's definitely paid off. And then I know other people that have done it and they're like, this isn't what we see. Right. Cause I, I've always been kind of, trained i guess to say um especially when you are doing self tapes you know keep it as bare as possible they don't want distractions in behind you and that kind of thing but then again you've got these people that are outside and in the wilderness um with nothing but distractions but it works for them um yeah but i, I can also see from a casting director standpoint if they're getting a hundred a day you know being <laughs> it's a sl slow day for them <laughs> hundred yeah. a day and uh you know, the, the 95 of them are exactly the same with the beige wall or the blue wall, and that's it. And then you get those five that are just different, right? Yeah, that's going to catch yeah. their eye. I, I get that. Um, I, I don't know. It's hard to say because, like, I like to also, I love it when they post auditions um, of actors that have booked the role. Like, for example, on the first season of... Um, Oh gosh, what's it called? It's set. The, the the actor's name is Dante something. It's on Netflix. It's like the kids, and it's like I'm so bad. <laughs> My brain is like it's so good. His audition is just like it just pops, and it's just like a major wow. And yeah. what's interesting is in between takes, and it's completely a hundred percent the character that he plays. I want to say a million little things, but that's not it. It's like 13, 13 was in it. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? It, it I, I don't think I do, to be honest, but. Uh. Oh, okay. Well, what he did was in between the scenes, he put on music and he was dancing with no shirt on. And it okay. was just like so interesting and completely 100% that character. It was so great. Um, and then I don't know if you've seen Jason Momoa for Game of Thrones, his yes. tape, yeah. which again, like, and if you look at the quality of it, the quality is terrible, but he owns that role. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I definitely do, uh, every once in a while, I'll just go onto YouTube and I'll, I'll look up celebrity auditions or something like that and just see, you know, like, I think I watched the one with, uh, oh my goodness, what's her name? Uh, Notebook. Um, oh, Rachel McAdams, yeah. Yeah, like when she did her audition for The Notebook, right? It wasn't, like, in, in reality, it wasn't anything to write home about, but you were compelled to watch her. Like it's just, Absolutely. She right? just popped right off that screen. Yeah. And it was like, at that point, I think they'd had a couple of people in mind for that character, and she came in, and she had, like, I think one night to do it. Because actually her coach at the time is one of my coaches. So I know a little of the behind the scenes. Um, and Perfect. it was a lot about the chemistry that her and Ryan had in the room. It was a hundred percent about like the two of them, like they just like boosh, electricity. Right. And I, I'm pretty sure that actually while they were filming, they didn't really get along, which is why they're so electric. Okay. 
I, I've heard those stories too, which are kind of cool to hear. Yeah. You know, they don't get along, but you wouldn't know it on screen, right? No. no. And then, of course, they were in love after that and all yes, of that. And you know? that yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's with my wife and I, we hated each other in the beginning. So, oh, well, there you go. You know, it, there's something to that, I think. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we've been married 21 years now. So, wow. Congrats. That's well, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, there's something to that, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know what? We we haven't really started talking about any of your projects yet, so you know. <laughs> we probably shouldn't do that, <laughs> right? Um, before we actually get to your 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 main feature here that we we definitely want to touch on, um, I am kind of curious about some of the other projects that you've you know kind of worked on recently, like Sirens or Van Helsing. Um, sure. I've actually noticed when I was kind of scrolling through your IMDb that uh, you've actually been a part of some really uh, you know some cult favorites, if you will. Um, like Supernatural, Battlestar Galactica, Van Helsing, I know has kind of a bit of cult following as well. And um, just kind of curious about your take on being a part of those shows. And, and, uh... Well, I love working as an actor. So uh, any pretty much, I don't really remember ever having like a terrible experience on anything. It's interesting when you step into a show that has a huge following, the responsibility you're sort of feel and you're just like I hope they welcome me as this character and then but then again even if they hate you that's also kind of fun because it just still plays into the whole world but you do feel a little bit of, res of a responsibility because you know what a giant fan base they have um but of course it's always like amazing because you become kind of a fan of the show as well I feel I try to always watch all the shows that shoot in Vancouver for sure, if not all across Canada. And then, you know, they're the shows that I just adore and love. And I'll just call my agent and be like, if you can get me on this show, I would do anything. <laughs> Please just get me an audition for it. And like when certain things come to town, I'm like, I have to be in that show. You have to get me in the room for that. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. It is. Um, I, I do that on occasion, but probably not as often as I should. <laughs> um, I, actually, going back, because I'm kind of curious, um, like obviously you're an established actress and uh, you've been, you know, so many credits to your name right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank um, you. But over, like in your earlier stages, um, when you were actually trying to get auditions across Canada, let's say you're living in Vancouver, but you want an audition in Montreal, like for example, I'm struggling with that right now where you know I'm only getting the auditions here locally. I want to expand, but of course I I'm nobody. Right. Oh, so I'm, I'm, say that. Well, I, I mean in the grand scheme of things, right? Like in terms of uh you know what they what they're looking for if you are gonna go outside your province, because I know there's the tax credits and all that kind of stuff as well that play into it. But for example, I mean what's your residence? I'm assuming Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. My primary residence is Vancouver. Right. But you can work in Toronto. You can work in mm -hmm. L.A. Um, because I think you're at least established enough now to, to be able to do that. Did you find a struggle in the beginning as well? Like that I'm kind of feeling or was. Well, it was interesting because I've been in the industry for quite a while now. And I was really fortunate that when I started in Winnipeg, the film and television industry there was just kind of beginning, at least like the like the global and especially the American producers was just beginning there. So there weren't that many actors to compete against. Like literally there was five of us that would audition against each other and one of us would get the part and it would kind of rotate sometimes, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I'm going to work at some point, hopefully. Um, so I was able to build a little bit of a resume. So when I came out to Vancouver, again, the film industry was not huge. It was definitely more established, but there weren't that many other actors to compete against. Um, and because I had a resume and I had a reel, I was able to get a great agent that I immediately, when I got to Vancouver, I was reading, I didn't have to kind of, you know, work up to the bigger roles. I was immediately reading for guest stars and leads and supporting characters and all of that. Like I didn't have to start with actor roles, but of course I would read for actor roles on certain projects like feature films. It's like, a feature film, you 
because it's like generally like I just read for one of the new ones that Seth Rogen is producing. So I'm more than happy to audition for an actor role on a Seth Rogen produced movie. Cause it's probably going to be a big deal. Right? right. Versus I don't really want to audition for a TV show for an actor role. Cause I'd rather, you know, kind of wait around for like a juicier, bigger part. Um, so I was fortunate that when I got here, I didn't really have to, because of my resume and because of my reel, I immediately was trusted and brought in for those things and I could was delivering at that level. Um, so then as, you know, more bookings came and the more confidence my agent had in me, and a lot of it too is like how much pull or relationships does your agent have with the other casting directors in Canada? That's a big part of it as well. So when they see a part that you're right for, they're like, you've got to see Tammy for this. You, I just know that she would crush this role. Um, that in the beginning really helps is their pitch to them because of their relationship. They're going to trust them and take it on. And then you as the actor have to deliver. Um, but one of the things that's also kind of helped for me is that I've spent a little bit of time in some of those cities. So I, before I, I moved, I moved to Toronto for a year and a half, but before I moved there, I had been working in Toronto and in Montreal. And I'm like, well, I've been working more here in Eastern Canada than in Western Canada. So maybe I should go move there and spend a little more time there so that I can actually start to create relationships in the room in person with casting. So right. then having spent a bit of time there and then them gotten to know me a little bit more as a person, not only just seeing my work, of course, then also helped. Um, and so it's just like continuing to build those relationships and any opportunity that comes up to do a self tape for them. It's like really, really delivering. Right. Is, is what you've got to do. Cause I know when I booked, Blue Mountain State in Montreal. Um, and the only reason I know this is because I booked the job, but then I had to do a tape for another show. So I just, my agent called the casting director from Blue Mountain State and was like, is there any way Tammy can come in and do a taping in your studio? Because she has nowhere else to go. And at that time, like we didn't have all the cam the cell phone, the Apple phone, iPhone and all of that. So I was like really scrambling. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So they were really gracious and they let me come in and do this taping. And the casting director there was like, we loved your taping. My assistants want to meet you. And I'm like, okay, that's amazing. Wow. And they're like, you don't understand. We saw 5,000 tapes for the part you booked wow. and you just popped off that screen. And they were like, they watched it like 10 times each. Cause they thought it was just the most hilarious thing they'd ever seen. I'm like, Oh, means so much to me thanks for sharing that um so it i feel it really is you've got to just like encompass that role definitely make some you know unique interesting choices that still tell their story and if you're like just in it and living it and commit to that like i feel like you do pop absolutely um yeah, uh, our guests, our, our viewer was saying 5001 since, you know, you're the other one. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> um, no, that's very, very cool. Um, thanks for sharing that, by the way. I think that was a lot yeah, of good information. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, not only for me, but anybody who will be watching. Um, sorry, I kind of got distracted there. I kind of want to go back to the, <laughs> the other shows that you were being a part of, especially the more recent ones with Sirens and uh, sure. Ben Helsing. Um, in Siren, you you play a detective, I believe, correct? I'm a deputy, actually. Deputy. So it's, it's interesting working on American shows because depending on if you're in a rural kind of area or if you're in a big city, it's like those different things. And we don't really have that in Canada. Like we have RCMP and then we have city police. I think those are the two things. But in the U.S., it's different. They have a sheriff's department. They have a city police department. They have, like, all these different things. So it is trying to keep track of all those things at times is a little challenging. Yeah, for sure. And uh, which, by the way, I'm going to actually switch this over here for a second real quick. Um, this is Tammy's website. Um, so if you guys get a chance, go to her website. She's got a couple demo reels on there, which um, I think are fantastic. And uh, one of the... Uh, parts that are on the demo reel is this uh, 
this deputy. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the deputy and, and what her, her role is in the show. Well, Deputy Marissa, um, she's a little bit of a loner. She really uh, is kind of married to her job. And one of the best, best things about working on the show, aside from like the show was amazing and the cast and crew were just unbelievably talented and everybody was so amazing. Like we miss, we all miss each other so much. We really became a family. Um, but I spent a lot of my time working with Gil Birmingham, who is American, but he has done, his resume is just like unbelievable. He was in Hell or High Water. He's one of the series regulars on Yellowstone um, right now. And like, he's just such an incredibly talented actor and he's such a kind and generous person. And I just love so much working with him because he's also not a small man. He's a big man. He's like, can definitely has a presence about him. And I, we constantly were butting heads because he played the sheriff and he was hiding a lot of the secrets of the town that I kept kind of stumbling onto or kept kind of figuring out. And like, I, get real close and figure something out. And then he would work behind the scenes and all of a sudden, you know, we'd be like, oh, uh, I'm an idiot versus an idiot. Like, how, how did that happen? I was so close. And a lot of the times, you know, I wanted to solve the crime, but I also wanted really to please him. And so it was interesting thing to work at that a lot. It's like not only what's going on in the show, but I kind of felt like he was a father figure to my character. And I was constantly like, I'm so smart. Look at what I've done. I figured this out. And then he's like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh. So that was that was one of like, I really enjoyed that because it was also, you know, I had to, a lot of the times it was just like me and the guys, like me and the boys who are the main leads of the show. Cause they were the ones getting in trouble all the time. And then like me and the sheriff's department. So it was interesting to, you know, have to deal with that dynamic all the time, but it was also a lot of fun and it would have been so great to see where the show would have gone if we would have gotten a fourth season. For sure. Right. Well, I mean, again, I, I haven't actually watched the show myself. The only thing I've really seen is your clip that you, you shared on your uh, your demo reel. It does look interesting. I, I I might have to go check that out now, the rest of it. <laughs> got to check it out. Boy, so you got to yeah. look out for those mermaids. <laughs> right? Well, and the funny thing is I have heard good stuff about the show, like just hearsay or whatever. Um, folks that have seen it, they really enjoyed it. So I just got to get off my butt and watch it, you know. <laughs> well, um, I'm definitely biased, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess eh? just a little bit. Um, no, that's that's fantastic. Uh, when it comes to oh my goodness, it's already seven thirty. So mm -hmm. let's jump right into your your film because we okay. definitely need to chat about that. Um, Riverfront Romance. Now this this was actually written by Kate Pregno. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. Okay. And I'm just kind of curious how you guys kind of like, did you guys know each other already? Like, how did this collaboration begin? No, you know what? We didn't know each other, but it's funny because I've worked with her, her husband, Corey Sevier, which I was like in a roundabout way. It's, a, it's interesting because the film industry does feel so big at times, but it's also very small at other times. Uh, because a good friend of mine, Cindy Busby, who I've done a couple of movies with, she's good friends with Kate. So it was like this triangle of things. So... Um, I actually had gotten offered the role through the production company Vortex. So they had already planned to make this movie and then they offered it to me. And they also uh, gave me the offer of being an executive producer, which I 100% jumped at. And the thing is, is I read Kate's script and I loved it. It's just, it's such like a fun and interesting movie. And there was a lot of the story of... Um, of Kara that I really, really enjoyed because it, her and the lead actor who's played by Morgan, um, they work together to kind of try to solve the problem. And a lot of the times in a lot of the movies of the week, they butt heads a lot. So I thought it was interesting that they really came together to try and solve this. And does it work? Does it not work? We yeah. don't know. <laughs> We're not saying right now. You got to watch it. That's right. Tune in. Yes. Still on Super Channel for pretty much the whole month of October. So, absolutely. And you know, I think that was actually a pretty 
decent segue to actually watch the trailer if you're up for oh, that. Yeah. I just got to watch my buttons. I'm horrible about this, to be honest. All right, let's give this a shot. And I'm going to go full screen with that. There we go. <laughs> Finally sold the place. They did. To me. I can't believe this is real. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you doing on my property? We're building the dam. I'm Riley. The people in this town raised me as much as my mom did, and they're carrying this town on their backs. I know it's hard to see the place you grew up in change so much, but sometimes change is good. The river is the heart and soul of this town, and you can't put a price on that. This whole section downriver from my place will dry up. I'm really sorry about that. Trust me. Why don't you come over tomorrow night? Okay, sounds great. Is this too much? You're nervous, aren't you? I'm not nervous. You're allowed to like him, you know. Look, I know you think you're doing the right thing here, but all you're doing is giving people false hope. Hi. Hey. I'm sorry. Did you even put up a fight? Getting to know you these past weeks? There's something between us, something real. Really? Because it feels like to me that the second things started going off the rails, you threw in the towel. You are so much work. I can take you higher where the fire burns. Back in heaven. There we go. Um, <laughs> yes, very nice. Um, so I'm kind of curious how many how many days of filming for that? We had three weeks of filming. Um, so I'm going to say. 15 days, 14 days. Uh, I was like, I flew out to Toronto the next day. I did my fitting and then on Monday I was on set and I was there for just over, just for like three and a half weeks. Okay. And where was it filmed? It was filmed like, in town? Brantford, Ontario and in Hamilton. We shot the majority of it in Brantford. And then the last two days we were in Hamilton. Okay. Well, I, I'm actually, yeah, that was a pretty quick filming. Well, like for a movie of the week, that's pretty regular. I um, guess, yeah, that's true. It was, it was nice, though, that we had a full weekends off, like two days on the weekend, because I've worked on some movies of the week where you'd get just like one, in, in like a 14, 15 week, or day shoot, you'd get two days off total. So okay. like one in the first week, one in the second week, and that's it. And it's like, that's tough. <laughs> right. And I always kind of find this funny because, of course, Canadian um, production companies do this all the time where they film a project, although it's all Canadian for the most part, it's based in the U.S., right? Which, you know, I'm assuming this one was well, based on the American flags anyway. <laughs> um, is... I always find that kind of weird. Like I always wondered, like, obviously you're an actor, you, you create that for yourself, but I always found that kind of interesting to kind of go, okay, like I'm in Canada, but I'm playing an American. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> it just seems kind of weird to me sometimes. Well, it's just, I think that part of the reason they do that is because there's a bigger audience in the U S Yeah, and, and like, that's, the that's the reason why you know it's uh if you look at it's interesting because like knowing about this for um like the zoning with being a producer or and or if you've ever booked a u.s national commercial um there are like so many different areas so based on where it airs you as an actor get paid way more money if it airs in like a lot of different areas in the u.s versus like in canada the zones are so much smaller uh so even like if you were to sell like say for instance this movie to the u.s depending on the areas you you play it in 
that would affect like how much the sale is and those kinds of things. Right. So I think that they just make it a lot of the times, like a, a lot of film and television is just generic American because there's such a huge demand for American content in the U S alone. Right. And that kind of brings up the question, like, you know, we've already mentioned it's, it's available on, on super channel here in Canada. Um, where else is it available? Like, and I thought I read somewhere that it was actually available in other locations or other yeah, venues. Yeah, it's a, it's airing on Super Channel right now until almost the end of October. You can also watch it on demand, and you can also watch it on Apple TV and Amazon Prime in Canada. And then it is coming to the U.S. in the new year, which is great. And is that through Amazon as well, or we oh, actually? I'm I'm not 100 percent sure who the broadcaster for the U.S. is yet, okay. uh, but as soon as we're allowed to announce, I definitely will be shouting it out to America. <laughs> right, for sure. Um, and was there any intent in the beginning, or now, or in the future to, to actually have like a theatrical release for it? I know it's made for TV, but yeah, no, uh, it was always just made for TV. There are definitely, you know potentially could go to Netflix as, you know, a movie on Netflix. Um, but no, this was not, not for the theatrical release and especially not the last couple of years. There's been so fewer movies that have been made for the theater because obviously well, they're, uh, they're not open. Um, and like a lot of the bigger, especially huge budget shows, they want to wait uh, for it to be released, which is understandable because, uh, you know, there's already been some movies that have been released and then they're also being screened at the same time online and their box office numbers are just not good. Uh, and like as an actor, as a producer, as a director, you want to have high numbers so that you can use that in order to make another movie versus they can be like, well, you, we paid you $500 million to do this movie and it made... Ten million dollars in theaters. And you're like, yeah, but oh. <laughs> you know. So I think, like, even for the amount of features that have been filmed in Vancouver in the last couple of years, there definitely has not been as many in comparison to other years. For sure. Um, and I'm wondering if that's going to be kind of a trend of the future. To be honest, um, like, I, I'm wondering. I don't know. If, I, if I think people are... like going to the theater. I know I do. It's a, it's a different experience, you it know? Is. Yeah, it, it is. Um, but I have, a, I don't know, this is my, my view or thought is I think a lot of people are kind of going to become hermits after all this is kind of done. <laughs> and they're not going to want to leave the house anymore. It's just like, you know what? I'm just going to turn on Disney and <laughs> watch whatever I want or Netflix or Amazon or, I mean, there's so many services now, right? Is the other thing. Yes, um, there is. There definitely is. So we're definitely giving the people a reason not to go to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I agree. I would like to see it kind of kick back and, and start to grow again. Um, I think oh, that the hardcore theater moviegoers are going to go back. I know I will. Um, sorry, I just had a viewer post this up here. Um, yeah. My 18-year-old daughter is currently working as an extra on a few productions being filmed in and around Calgary. She has a passion for acting and has created a resume showcasing her experience through various acting studios, as well as drama theater classes in school. She would love some tips on how to advance and bring her talent to a new level. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Rhoda Ann. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's great that she's doing background on on some productions, it's definitely beneficial. Not only A, are you making some money, but you're learning how a set works. And I know that when I first started out and even like when it was a little bit leaner years for me, I reached out to a producer friend of mine and asked, you know, is there any way I could do any stand-in work? And because being a stand-in, you get the opportunity to almost film like the entire movie but you're just not being filmed. You know, like I, there was one stand-in job that I did where the director got me to rehearse with all of the other actors and then the at lead actress would just come on for the take. So I would, he would like 
block me out on the set. We'd I'd rehearse, so I'd have to like know the dialogue. It was crazy. It was like I filmed an entire movie, but I just was not the one that ended up on camera. And I loved the experience because I learned so much. It's just you when you have any opportunity to be on set, and even now to this day, especially because technology is changing so much, I'm constantly asking questions. You don't want to be annoying. You don't want to get in anyone's way. You don't want to slow anyone down. But when there's time, I think definitely asking questions is important. Uh, like I always ask questions now about you know, what kind of lens are we shooting? What does the shot look like? Where is it starting? How, what is my frame here? How tight am I? So that I know how to gauge my performance. And this has only come through watching other actors ask those questions and really know how to work the camera. Like speaking of shows I was on, Supernatural, I was super excited to work on that show. I know a bunch of the crew. Um, and I was really happy to do like the scene I have is with Jensen and I've admired his work for a while, but I really learned a lot just by being in the scene with him and watching him manipulate the camera. Like he knew the camera so well and he was using it to his advantage to tell like kind of his side of the story. And I was just like, I honestly, I was like, I am beyond impressed with how well you know that camera and what it does for you. I was just like, wow. And I just wanted to continue to watch him because there were just these small things he was doing that made it look so incredible. And I absolutely stole that and used it on the next movie I worked on. A hundred percent. That's awesome. So I think like doing that, like the whole background thing is really great. Like learning as much as you can, seeing what actors do. And then of course, it's, a, it's a lot about experience. And I think training is very, very important. And the biggest thing her daughter needs to understand is, and I say this, like I coach people, I've mentored actors is that it's a marathon. It's not a race. And one of the biggest things that you have to manage is your mindset. And it's a because it's a lot of no's. It is a lot of no's. And you can want something so bad and it can be so close and right in your hand and then it, it doesn't happen. But the biggest thing is that it's not rejection. They're not rejecting you. It's about selection. They just selected this actor for that part. That doesn't mean you're not talented. That doesn't mean you weren't interesting and made good choices. And then you got to kind of shrug it off and you got to move on to the next one. And it's tough. It's really tough. But that's the biggest thing is you've just got to keep going if it's what you love. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in that as well. I mean, it is a complete mental game, right? You, you have to have that mental strength to be able to say, mm, okay it just wasn't me today right like and it's kind it has of, nothing like, to do with you it's just no i very much liken it to being an athlete especially like uh, games uh, sports that are kind of solitary sports like tennis for example um it's they have to manage their mindset you see them mentally fall apart and break and it's just because there's all this stuff going on but it's also when after you get the job as an actor, it's like, how do you deal with your mindset from you book the job? You're so excited. Then you're freaking out. Can I do this job? Oh my goodness. And then never mind that, you get to set. And there are a hundred crew, 150 crew, how many other actors? And it's like everything slows down and gets really quiet when they say, roll camera speed and then action and it's like so quiet <laughs> you know because they've got to get the sound and you in your head you have to be present in the scene and on top of your game because you can like i remember especially when i was starting out all of a sudden my heart rate is starting to go and i'm starting to freak out because i'm like oh my goodness you don't want to screw up the take it feels like there's so much pressure going on and then add on top of that like they're behind you know they're behind they're rushing this is going on that's going on go over here blah 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 and it's like people are in your face doing your hair and your makeup like how do you stay in the zone 
through all of that as well. Like that is so important. It's so important. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot. Do you think that's something that can be like through schooling or, you know, workshops or stuff? Do you think that's something that could be trained? I think it definitely comes with practice for sure. The more time you spend on set, the more comfortable you comfortable you become like and if you do on camera classes some of the really good classes do kind of walk through that like they'll say all right let's roll camera rolling and action and it's kind of almost like being in an audition because they do say that in an audition yeah. um and so like i feel like in auditions that used to be kind of part of a test that all of a sudden you're on camera, the lights are on, everybody's watching you. So it's like, if you're able to deal with that pressure with, you know, two people in an audition, five people in an audition, 10 people in an audition, then you hopefully can handle doing that on set. It was funny because there was this one movie that I worked on, Shooter, starring Mark Wahlberg, Antoine Fuqua directed it. I was like, I have to be in that movie because Antoine Fuqua, um, Denzel had just won the Oscar for training day. I'm, and the fact that he was coming to Vancouver, I was like, I have to be in this movie. I have to work with Antoine Fuqua. Um, so I ended up booking a part on it and it was funny because the DP was like so great because he was very like laid back and kind of casual, but, and like Antoine had a lot of fun with directing me and like really interesting little notes that, you know, he whisper in the ear of the other actor and then he whisper in my ear and like one of the things we were in the strip club and this guy's kind of this greasy guy that he keeps trying to touch me he's like i want you to like feel his dirt on you after he touches you and was like you know internally feeling that and then how do you as a character deal with that so it was like interesting things like that but then also antoine would be okay tammy we're turning around. You have three cameras on you. There's 150 extras. Good luck. <laughs> I'm just like, oh gosh. But in a way, it was like, he was like, you got to be confident and cocky in this. Do you have, are you going to bring it? And it was just like, you know, I'm going to, I'm not letting, I'm not letting anyone down here. So yeah. that was interesting though. But it's like a moment you don't forget because all of a sudden you're like, there are three cameras on me. There are like 150 extras and like a hundred crew watching me, including Antoine Fuqua, the director. Um, right. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I know, right? You can't help sometimes, you know, feel like you're being judged, although, you know, you're just doing your job. <laughs> but, um, so I'm kind of based on, on this, uh, you know, direction we're kind of going. What's your most memorable moment that you can think of to date, I guess? Well, definitely like that with Antoine Fuqua. I was like, it was so funny because like, I remember a moment on set uh, in a movie with Ben Affleck and Uma Thurman. And uh, it, it was interesting because, you know, the bigger the star, you, do they want you to talk to them? Do they not, you know? And especially like, I respect actor, I respect, well, everyone on set, but they might be in a thing and it's so it's like if they're in their headspace they need to be in I don't want to bring them out of that and it's the same for like anybody that on the crew as well you know if they're in the thing you just let them do the thing but it was funny because I was standing beside Ben and we were in Gastown and there were all these people they had like barricades because people were screaming Ben Affleck Ben it was so surreal and he bends over and picks up a penny in the street and he's like, find a penny, put it in your pocket. And I was like, Ben, this is gas town. You don't pick up things off the ground here. <laughs> but I was just like, he was just so normally down to earth. Um, so it was like a little thing like that. Cause that was like one of the first movies I did in Vancouver. And I just, it was interesting because um, really my thought was it's not so far from here to there. Right. You know, right. and a lot of the times we think it is because they're this big, huge star. And it's like, no, he's just a guy. Yeah. He's just a guy doing what he loves. And like, it's not that far from here to there. So it was like that moment was really interesting. Um, and like, I feel like every project I do, I really get a lot of amazing moments that I always take and, you know, tuck in my pocket to carry me through. 
Uh, like every project I've done, there's something about it that I really find amazing and or, you know, memorable or challenging or any of those things. So like any project I'm in, I could tell you like a ton of different moments. I was like, this was a great moment. Um, but like shooting guns and jumping out of helicopters and shoving a gun in Meatloaf's face and having Kim Coates like push me around and I've got to push him around. And it's like all of those things. I just love what I do. I love all the people and just like the collaborative nature of it all. And you never know when that magic is just going to happen. And when you do and you happen to catch it on camera, it's just like, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, my goal is to eventually reach the, the number you're at for projects <laughs> now. And you I'm sure you'll be way past that at some point, but <laughs> I just want to get to your level now. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, of course, we're all in a big hurry to do it. Of course. Well, we are. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the other thing, right? It's, it's, it's a persistence thing and a, you got to have patience in this industry for sure. You do. And it's, it's hard. It's challenging. That's one of the hardest things. Like I'm still, you know, I still struggle with that. I still am like, where is the next job? I want to work. Where is it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had this conversation with a few different guests where, you know, if you don't have that create or you, you've got a lull in that creative outlet for a certain period of time, you almost get into like a funk or a depression that you don't have that outlet anymore, right? So you, you're, mm -hmm. you're constantly craving it. It's, it's almost like an addiction, really. Oh, 100%. Right? I call acting my bad boyfriend. It's like, totally. <laughs> my, my boyfriend's not paying attention to me. <laughs> I need him. And yeah, then when you're no. on set and you're doing it, you're in love. It's the greatest time ever. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's it's so true. Um, yeah. Um, you know, on that note, we're actually like 50 minutes into the show. Um, we're wrong. So, yeah. It was so fun talking to you. Likewise. I, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. And I'm just going to throw this back up here real quick for folks. Uh, if you haven't gone there yet, definitely go to uh, TammyGillis.com. Um, she's got a lot of good stuff on there. Check out her demo reels and her resume and a whole bunch of stuff. Follow me on social media. I try to put um, a lot of stuff on, especially like my Instagram with like acting advice or acting tips and all of those kind of things. Cause I really do believe in paying it forward. Like I said, I've been a mentor for women in film and television here in Vancouver for I think seven or eight years now. I just, I really wish that I would have had somebody that I could, you know, have learned from and trusted. And, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes and I don't really believe in failure. I feel like if you, the only reason you fail is if you don't learn from it. And you have to be brave in trying things and seeing if it works or if it doesn't. Um, and so I like sharing my fail failures, but also sort of lessons with people in that let's not waste your time going through that because this is probably, this is the outcome I got. Uh, odds are similar. This may be the same for you. Let's try something different. This I found work. Let's try that. And then like kind of get to it a little quicker. You know, right, right. That's fair enough. And I, I, I believe um, your social media is at, uh, sorry, Real Tammy Gillis, right? That's at right. Real Across Tam all of them, Real Tammy Gillis. <laughs> so just check her out, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I don't know if this is, is that the same on Facebook as well? Yeah, same on Facebook. Same on Facebook. So go ahead and check all that out. And the uh, last note I will send to the folks that's watching right now, if you get a chance, go to the YouTube channel today subscribe if you like the show and uh, we'll see you next week um, thank you so much Tammy for joining us and for hanging around for a little extra longer than you know we normally do so I appreciate <laughs> that yeah no and thank you so much this was really great and thanks to everybody who's watching or will watch thank you yes because it definitely will be available afterwards so check it out have a good night everybody